Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about how you're not allowed to criticize the movies and the TV shows that Hollywood is putting out, no matter how bad they are. According to uh, Suicide Squad director David Ayer, he said that audiences are cheering on failure. They're cheering on failure. They're probably cheering on failure if they are, because they're so tired of being blamed when something doesn't do well. I think so. I think at some point you get to a place where it's like, you know what? Uh, obviously, the people working on these movies and TV shows absolutely hate me, and they're making a mockery of you know, whatever property I love, and they're they're waving it in my face. They're rubbing my nose in it. So yeah, if it fails, I hope it fails because maybe they'll they'll uh, get some common sense and fix it, or you know, I'd rather see it burn than than see it live on in this state. So yeah, they they probably are. And uh, this isn't a recent thing. Uh, people have been grousing about nerd shit in particular for as long as I can remember. Yeah, that's true. However, as of recent years, in the last like 10 years or so, I'd say, that we've had a, a, a culture in Hollywood of if your movie's dog shit and it's terrible and you get you get control of an IP that you're gonna just piss all over and ruin for new audiences and the mod and modern audiences, then your answer is that it's the audience's fault. They're all incels. They're all racist, istophobic, you know, misogynistic, sexist, some other bullshit. Because it can't possibly be because my movie sucks. Can't and be. if you say anything and you call out a movie sucking, then you're a terrible person. And they will literally have directors having up man baby tear mugs and telling you that, that it's your fault. And then all the reporters will join forces and tell everybody because it's all their friends and the certain type of people. Tell everybody else who doesn't like it. That's because they're a vocal minority. But yet they're they're the reason why a movie failed. And it's because they're terrible people. Yeah. Eventually you're going to be like, you know what? I hope your movie fails. Fuck you. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry. Pretty much, like, why should we reward that? And there are, look, there are some instances where, you know, uh, I might hate the people working on the movie or whatever, or the TV show, but, like, I, I can admit, hey, the show wasn't bad, the movie wasn't bad, whatever, but it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth that this person with this personality on social media saying the crap that they're saying is going to get rewarded. Also, he's you know? mad because he didn't get his, his cut yet. He's not going to. And, and other people have. Zack Snyder did. He didn't. He's pissy about it. Well, I mean, look at it from his point of view, though, too. Like, yeah, Zack Snyder got his cut. Freaking James Gunn did a sequel to his movie. It made less money than his movie, and he gets the whole DCEU. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know, I, well, I mean, that would kind of piss me but, off, But shouldn't too, he I mean. not be salty? Shouldn't he be cheering for their success? Isn't that his job? His yeah. job is to cheer for the success, not the, uh, hoping they fail, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm this just is, saying this has always happened. I think it's just that you were on the other side of the camera and you didn't notice as much. Yeah. As and I think know. it's been more mm -hmm. amplified by the Internet and by the, internet, the current definitely. culture in Hollywood yes. and the current culture and and pop culture journalism. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do woo uh, go out to shopclownfish.com shopclownfish.com you can pick up a copy of crimson Ren volume one and also previously on clownfish tv we have some in stock we're running out of previously on clownfish no, TV. we still have, we still have couple, quite a bit a couple hundred copies yeah. but um, running out is 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 you know subjective there hurry <laughs> hurry no everything's always last call last chance hurry 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 yeah but i mean that's what we have and that's it so. yeah that's it that's it so if you want it you better grab it uh so you've got 19 days yet guys so let's talk about this. I saw the tweet uh, on is it the tweet or the Z. What the hell are we calling them now? I don't know. It's the, 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 the tweet. It's a tweet. I saw tweet, this tweet, tweet, tweet. I saw this on Twitter X. and uh, X. God, I, it's still Twitter. You know what? It's still so Twitter. I said the year started out with Twitter identifying as Twitter and now it identifies as X. Am I misgendering Twitter? Am I going to get in or X? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. X, X, I meant X. Sorry. Uh, Am I going to get in trouble for that? Uh, David Ayer, he put this uh, Z tweet post up, and uh, actually Gary from Nerdrotic was one of the top responses to it. He said just basically was the first thing I said when I heard this thing, too, which is like maybe if you didn't treat audiences like shit. Oh, shocker, I know. That, that is the difference. Like, look, directors have always made shitty movies. People have always complained about shitty movies, you or they, they wouldn't go see them. But That's they, just it. 
they didn't were, have to deal with the temper tantrums on social media before. That, yeah, because basically there would be movies that were suck or were terrible movies. Yeah. And you just like, people just didn't go to the movies and people just let it go and forgot about it. And it wasn't a big deal. People complained about it in their small groups. But now that we have social media, it gets, you know, amplified. But now the directors before, you didn't hear what they had to say about you because it would be never revealed. Yeah. And now they're on there just flat out telling you to your face that you're, you didn't like my movie because you don't hate, you hate women. You must or be you, a Nazi. You're a racist. It's not because my movie sucked. We all worked really hard. So that automatically makes it good. It's just because you're a terrible person. No, we didn't take an IP that's been this way for decades and just change everything about it. And that's why you hate the movie. It's because you're a terrible person that doesn't understand that, you know, that characters cannot be the same race and gender they were for decades uh, for no good reason other than, you know, identity politics and because you're a terrible person sometimes think about what you've done you go stand the corner you think about it sometimes people work really hard on terrible things i mean we watched a documentary about the star wars holiday special mm -hmm. people worked really hard on the star wars holiday special and it was shit mm -hmm. but they still worked hard on it are we not allowed to make fun of it because you know, people worked hard on it. You I mean, said, you said, go in the corner and think about what you've done, but make sure you give us your money first and buy that ticket before you stand in oh, the corner. They, they will literally say that. Like, you don't have a right to criticize this movie because you haven't seen it. So when you pay for your ticket, then you have a right to speak. People pay for the ticket. They speak and they're like, you don't have a right to say that. They worked hard. We worked hard. They always, basically, I think what's going on is there's a lot of animosity in Hollywood toward influencers and people outside the system because it's a lot of pussy ass bitches in Hollywood. Who there are a lot of pussy ass bitches. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. can't take criticism. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, you put something out there. People are going to take a shit on it. You know, you can do the best thing ever there. I mean, I've seen some truly amazing movies, get some really unwarranted criticism, but you know, if somebody doesn't like something, they don't like it. Like we had, we had, um, when we first early on had shadow miners People just read it was only like it was only like a, like three chapters, maybe four chapters. It wasn't yeah. much there, and we were setting everything up, so nothing really. It, it's it's a lot of talk. Nothing really happened yet too much because it's a web comic. It's a web. It comic. goes very slow as yeah. a pace. Anyway, we had these people review it, and they crapped all over it. Actually, you were joking. You were gonna was it like it's shit or something? You said you're gonna put it in the back cover of the book. I yeah oh yeah he was like yeah it's because they just are they're like yeah it's shit. I was actually joking. I'm like oh, we should put that. We should put we that. Should, as it's a, shit. A review. Um, but know? anyway, so yeah. I wrote them and I said, and you know, I was like, oh, well, because here's the thing. And among their comments they made, some of it was unwarranted because there wasn't enough time yet to have established things they wanted established. And there just hadn't been enough time yet. Even in a normal book, there wouldn't be. But I said, some of the other things they brought up are valid points. And I was like, that is a valid point I hadn't thought of. In the future, I will take that into consideration because you, that is a good point that I never even considered. I could have got mad and I could have just been like, whatever you say is wrong. But the thing is, well, everything they said wasn't wrong. Like there was a, there was a, there were some things they said that were like really just to be nitpicky little bitches, but most of it, a big hunk of it, they had valid points. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I, they, they're not wrong here. So I'm going to take that into consideration and moving forward, I will make sure I address those, which I have because they had, they were right. And, and that's what, you know, you like, oh yeah, that's a good point. Next time I'll do that. I'll think about that. They really didn't know what to do because I wrote them and I was very nice about it. And they were like, then they kept trying to backpedal. The thing is, they thought it was crap. They were allowed to think that. Yeah, you're allowed to. I, I mean, I, I didn't, it made me feel bad. But I also realized that, you know, when I'm the only one looking at it or when you're working on a project and you're, you're always up on it, you need to step back. Because sometimes you can't see errors because it's right in front of you. But other people can see them. Or you know where the story is going to go. And the audience don't. doesn't. Yeah. And that's that's one thing, too. And, and it's hard, you know, when you're making anything like that. And because you have to base, basically, you have to put your ego aside and be like, I am telling a story. If you're doing a commercial product. In our case, like when we first started Child Buyers, it was just basically for us just doing a webcomic. But like. But if you're doing a commercial product, especially a multi-million dollar, it's like you're Based creating an IP with an existing audience. All right, you're creating a, a a product, and I know they hate they hate the word product, but that's what it is. People are paying for it, right? Uh, you're creating a product for that audience. So sometimes you know you have to put your your sensibilities and your ego aside and be like, what is the audience going to want? You know, you don't you don't serve hamburgers at Taco Bell, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have tried that, but it didn't work very well. They tried pizza at McDonald's. didn't go very well. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to have certain expectations. I'm not saying be boring. I'm not saying be garbage. But, like, 
these these a lot of these directors, these creatives are so in love with their own ideas that they're using existing IP to just try to get their own shit out there. Now, I'm not saying saying David Ayer is. Uh, I personally didn't like the Suicide Squad, the the original Suicide Squad movie. I love James Gunn's version. That being said. I think the damage was already done because nobody went to go see James Gunn's and it was actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, I, it took me six months to get around to watching it after people hounded me like, you have to watch James Gunn's. We really probably should good. read the comment though. <laughs> Let's get to the comment. I'm sorry, guys. Let's, oh my God. That's a criticism. That's going to be a criticism and in not, the comments. And you're completely correct. People do. They, they said, you guys uh, don't get to the, you don't get to the point. You start chit chatting with each other. Now, some people love that. That That's we true, do. but that you you'd be correct in this this situation. Yeah. So you're well, right. it's day after Christmas. Okay. Cut some slack. Here he says, Bigots. "I remember a time." Be- okay. Are you done? <laughs> I, I remember a time before a time when audiences applauded success. They still do, not cheering on failures. When film met wonder and magic, not a means of attack. When but you guys attacked the audience. When movies were enjoyed, not reverse engineered in hopes of finding ammo to attack. I applaud all my colleagues in the industry. I applaud all the people who work in film. I celebrate those with the courage to share a piece of themselves with the world. Okay, let's break this up. Okay. I remember a time before. You mean before 2014 because everything, you know, they, you guys didn't just invent diversity and inclusion. A time when audiences applauded success. Audiences applaud success. They've been applying success. They applaud success now. They're not wishing for failure. A lot of times they see what you're doing, and a lot of times you're just recycling old IP, and they can see this is going to end into that. They see the iceberg, they see the ship heading for the iceberg, and they're like this is not going to go well. Then your own people are out there talking about things like with the Dungeons and Dragons movie, how it emasculates men when it didn't, and then it turned audiences away. You guys, are you keep making these comments before your movie comes out to piss the fans off, and the fans don't watch it. And then they're like, they cheer for you to fail because you make stupid decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I agree with, uh, I agree with Epic Mike. This is exactly what we just said. People have always been critical of movies. It's just more visible due to social media. People- yeah, but anymore, though, people, these, these, these Hollywood types are making it their mission to try to be, they, when Ryan Johnson's known for trying to be divisive on purpose and you put him in charge of Star Wars, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? Continue. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. No, I just that that's that's it. So people aren't just celebrating failures; um, they're celebrating the destruction of a system. And yes. Thought that uh, framing fans and customers as the problem was always the best way to deflect from the fact that they have sacrificed good storytelling and quality filmmaking on the altar of commercialism and representation. Exactly. Oh, look at this. Exactly. Look at this. I remember when Kevin Smith was applauded for being overtly critical of uh, George Lucas for the prequels. Yeah, saying Lucas wrote them over a weekend in his bathtub. Now he doesn't understand how anybody could be critical of the sequel. Or his show. Or his or show. His, his show. shows. See, that's that's it too. Like you're you're look, I'm gonna be completely fair. Your perspective changes when you go from being a critic to a creator when you're on the other side of it. Now, the difference is there are some people who have made that leap that still understand what it's like to be a critic, what it's like to be a fan. And for the longest time, Kevin Smith, I think, did. But then when he went Hollywood, he's kind of like, I don't understand. I made a career out of, of shitting on George Lucas and on Warner Brothers, but now people are shitting on me. How how did that happen? I know, right? It's, it's them that are wrong. The fans are wrong. And that's just it. It's like they're talking about how they celebrate failure. And all, sometimes I think people do just want to see something as a failure, even when it's not. Or yeah, they want to look for problems yeah, where they yeah. don't exist. I, I've seen movies get, come up and they're like, it's woke. And, and, and on, I hate using that term, but they said it. <laughs> but honestly, um, some of the choices in the film weren't. But you're just so wanting to hate on it because of the studio that made it that you're saying that. And, and, you know, so I think that some, but I don't think that's the majority. I think that's a very small group of it. Most people are doing this because they're tired of being bullied because you don't like the shit they're giving you. They're no longer giving you a really, really good filet mignon steak. They're giving you a pile of shit and telling you it's steak. It's recycled steak. But now, you know, it's, it's made out of onions and it's recycled. No, it's made out of bugs. bugs. I was going to say it's bugs. And and, you know, but because it's, it's it's bugs identify as steak and you have to love (laughs) it. (laughs) So, and if you don't, it's because you hate bugs and you are a a istophobic piece of shit. Um, Steak Uggs. I know. Right. So I'm just like, it's, it's, you guys did this yourselves because you put out 
absolute garbage. You you cannot come up with anything unique, original. You just recycle IP that's been around for years, make all kinds of really stupid changes for just the cha- sake of change, sake of agenda. And then when people question it, you immediately attack. If you don't attack them, the journalists attack them. Your actors attack them. Other people attack them. Cowboy Bebop show? Yeah. yeah, you know, I say more. And then when it, when people then they're just like, you don't want our money or you tell them, I don't want you. I don't want men coming to this movie. So they don't come. And then you yell because men didn't come to the movie. It's like, and if it was just a small group of people doing this, why would your movies be failing? Because that you're talking the majority of people, the vast majority of people aren't going to your movie. <laughs> this is funny. Coming from the director at once said, fuck Marvel. Um, yeah, well, that's it. And like, there are movies that look, the uh, attitude of the people who've worked on the movies ha- has a- absolutely tainted our view of it. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, very good example. Uh, I held off on watching the movie because the people associated with the movie went on about how they were, you know, very gleefully emasculating men and uh, diversity and inclusion and blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh God, this movie's going to be uh, Tumblr. D and D the movie, five E the movie, the critical role movie, whatever you want to, you know, and we finally got around to watching it and it was pretty good. And Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't those things. And it was kind of the same with the haunted mansion movie for Disney too. Like the media made these talking points up where they took, you know, something that somebody associated with the movie said, blew it up. And then you basically advertised to audiences, Hey, don't come see my movie because I hate you. And, and the audience is fine. You know, money's tight. The economy's not great. I, I could I could say that right. ten dollars twelve dollars. I'm tired yeah. of you being told you have to love it. You only can say positive things about stuff, and you have to love it, or you're a terrible person. You're you're only allowed to say nice things. It's like you guys. Are, wait, then you can, then the same goes for your audience. If people don't like your movie, you're only allowed to say nice things. You're not allowed to to, to vilify and attack your audience. But here you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So you can make a game, make a lip. Yes. It's like a Mexican standoff. Like who, who's going to flinch first? It's like, I think it's Hollywood's attitude that they expect people to just eat what they're served and not ask what's in it or what, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, like Iger, they're just going to come to it because it has star Wars on it. And they're yeah. just going to come to it because it has Marvel on it, but they don't, they don't. That's because it says it doesn't mean people want to watch it, you know? Cause it's not what they know as Marvel and star Wars. Yeah, uh, you got backwards, says this guy. Studios start buying up beloved franchises and destroying them. Then they blame the fans for reacting. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, you know, and I do think, again, I do think that sometimes people do nitpick. But um, the studios have not done themselves any favors. I remember when directors and actors would do press junkets because they wanted to sell the audience on the movie. Uh, we want you to come see our movie. We want you to give our show a chance. Even if they change things, like they should be out there being like, hey guys, we're going to change this up a little bit, you know, but please, you know, give it a chance. It's a good show. You know, we really, you know, we respect everything that's come before. You know, you guys are yeah, awesome. But you, have to, you have to actually respect everything that's came before first. Right. And a lot of times they don't. But then immediately they're like, yeah, we freaking hate our toxic white male man baby audience bigot. They're probably all Nazis. They probably all have, they are 15s in the freaking closet because they're, you know, they, with, along with their hood because they're all horrible people. Oh, they're MAGA like my, hats. They're right? MAGA hats. You, you know, know what gets me, though? <laughs> what happens, though, they all, that what the, the sad part about all this is, is when you actually have movies that would be are good movies that have representation in them, but that's done organically and done well, which existed before 2014, contrary to what Hollywood tells you. Yeah. They're not doing well because people aren't going to see them because they're already expecting a lecture. And yes. then and it's and so it's actually legitimately hurting um organic diversity or good films with women or good films, you know, with whatever, because they're not going to it because they're expecting to have agenda shoved down their throat and then to be then be bullied by the the directors, the, the studios, the journalists, the actors, etc. So they just don't even give it a chance. And there are some projects that are good projects that don't fall into those categories, but people assume they're going to because of what has been coming before it in the last few years and what happens when you don't like it or you don't go. Here. Uh, David, I like you, but come on. Literally all of yes. us have been praising Godzilla minus one all December. Oh, that's a problem now too, because if you like Godzilla, if you like Godzilla minus one, you must be alt right. You know, that was, that was the thing that was like that's the alt right. It's like, this is so stupid. You've Alita against Captain Marvel. 
Yeah, it's like they keep creating this us versus them. And yeah, I, I blame social media. I blame uh, activists posing as pop culture journalists. Uh, these are wannabes that want to get into the industry. And yeah, you're going to have a lot of people working on these movies. They have different politics because they're in California or whatever. But still, like, you've never felt the disgust that the studios have for their audience. Like, trust me, if they could if they could produce whatever they want, and who wouldn't want to? Produce whatever you want to produce and not have to worry about selling it to anyone. Well, that would be fantastic. Like, I'm going to make millions of dollars every year. I can just make whatever the hell I want. You know, it doesn't matter if people buy it or not. And that's the ideal. That's what a lot of these creators want, whether it's comics or video games or whatever. They want to be able to make whatever the hell they want. Well, they want socialism. I think they do. Get, they're going to get to sit home all day and make up shit and then get paid for We've it. We've had people tell us that. They said that they think that they should be able to just sit home and make comics that nobody's going to read. Comics because for themselves. They're them. Because they're them. And that's the way that, you know, it should work. And we kind of had a form of, of that. We kind of had a form of socialism in all this uh, uh, venture capital floating around that you could lose $200 million on a movie. And it's like, well, that's okay. You know, kind of like, there's one thing I did like about the uh, Neil Patrick Harris and uh, Doctor Who, where he's talking about, did you see that clip? I don't know if you saw it. I don't clip. think I did. No. Where um, he's going through, he has a little stage play and he's talking about how all the, the doctor keeps uh, getting his companions killed off or gone or whatever. And it's like, well, that's okay then. Cause you know, she came back to life or whatever. Oh, that's okay. And it's like, that's, that's like this, like, well, it's, it's okay if our movie loses hundreds of millions of dollars. Cause pff, that's okay. We'll just go get some more, you know, ESG money or whatever. We'll just go get some more venture capital. It's never ending. So it doesn't matter. We don't have to make money. And now they do. Now right. they do. Back to this. When films met wonder and magic, that's what people want. And this person said, I also remember when your original IPs got made. Yeah. Formulas weren't at a forefront, uh, aiming to be 30 film saga franchise and yeah. less studio interference. Yeah, because people want the wonder and magic to come back. They aren't. They're formulaic. They're boring. Not a means of attack, which these movies have been lately. When movies were enjoyed, they're no longer enjoyed because you keep giving us regurgitated shit with a bunch of changes for no damn good reason. And they're not reverse engineers and hoping to find ammo to attack. But that's what the studios do. You know? And, yeah. then, and then when people don't like it, because they were trying to reverse engineer IP, but then they don't take the, they don't take, you can make something that's based on IP that's different than the IP, but that works. I'm thinking of the, the CG He-Man show. You can do something that works. If you can find the spirit of the show and you can contain that and you can move it forward, you can make changes that work, but they don't. They just look at it as like, it's an IP that's evergreen. So I'm just going to, if we make all these changes to it for no damn good reason and make everybody a lesbian because they can, or some form of identity. And now all the men are women and no one's white and everything else because we I know mean, all the characters were white before and just because that we're saying that we're making these superficial changes, not because they're good characters, where we can't make new characters that are good characters that happen to be these things. We have to use appropriate characters and then when people are like why i don't understand why you did that it doesn't come across as the old one it doesn't feel like the old one you're just a bigot yeah it's it's um yeah i love this 2016 suicide squad director says f marvel and uh i remember when we were you know we weren't so mean we weren't so mean about <laughs> everything uh yeah well that's just it there it's a platform people want these existing characters and these existing franchises that were made by smarter more creative people uh, they want to use them as vehicles to push, you know, whatever messaging or whatever they want to push or their fanfic or whatever the hell is going on. Uh, but we're not getting new things. We're not. And when we do get new things or we get, you know, a good take on an old thing, people flock to it again. Godzilla. Fantastic. Uh, you know, Oppenheimer, Barbie. I mean, we had we had Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. You know, again, these are. Existing IP, yeah, because, you know, Oppenheimer was a huge IP. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I'm saying is that they're not, it's not the 51st Marvel movie. It's well, not the, you know, another Disney Star Wars movie. I think Barbie, Oppenheimer, and um, their Mario Brothers are like the top three movies this year. I think Guardians was like four. But uh, Little Mermaid was like down at number nine. Yeah. Yeah. You people, know? People are, they're over it. They're over the umpteenth live action princess movie. They're over that. And then the messaging is just in the, the identity politics and all that crap. That's just sort of the, the cherry on the shit. No, you know what it is? They're using it to deflect. They're using it to deflect. Cause they you know, know it's shit. They and know they're it's like, shit. Look, look, look how, you know, Oh, don't cancel us. Twitter. Don't you know, cancel us. Twitter doesn't have that kind of power. I'm sorry. I mean, Musk was an idiot when he spent that much money on it because we could have told him that most of the accounts weren't real. I think you can actually. Like, I'm running. Everybody knew that. I think you can actually trace a lot of this back to 
uh, them misunderstanding social media and not realizing that a lot of the the numbers they thought they were going to get were from bot accounts. They weren't actual consumers, and so they were making you know everything: movies, TV shows, uh, animation, comics, whatever, for a, a very very small army of stands on Twitter. And now it's biting them in the ass because they're like, "Wait, the general public doesn't like this." What? No, it's impossible. It was trending on Twitter. We we just spent two hundred million dollars on a movie because you know we saw it trending on Twitter and nobody came to see it. What the hell? Our, our activist uh, HR person, our activist whatever diversity inclusion manager, told us uh, that we had to do these things. You notice that they fired so many of those people this year. Mm-hmm. Like like they literally like Disney tossed their the other DEI activist, and I guess they they brought another one in, but she's part of HR now. But like all these studios fired their diversity and inclusion uh, people because I think they were getting involved in the production of movies. And they're like, well, you have to do this and you have to do that. And you have to do this checkbox and that checkbox. And then the proof is in the pudding. They put the movie out there. It was like, oh, everybody hates this. Oh, shit. You know, maybe we should have just, you know, stuck the formula. And I don't know, guys. You know, we don't like losing money. You can only lose so much money. There's not an endless supply of money. You know, case, case in point, uh, you know, Aquaman, people were cheering on the failure of Aquaman because they're like, it's not a good movie. Uh, Amber Heard was in it. Unfortunately, she, or fortunately, she had uh, 11 lines. Uh, she could have had more than that. But I think it could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Um, but uh, people are cheering for it because they're like, yeah, this is a shit movie with a shit actress. And, and the DCEU has been shit. So let's just, <laughs> just put this thing out of its misery. Audiences will tell you what they want or what they don't want. It's not really cheering on failure. It's basically people are like, good, my voice is being heard. That's what it is. Like, if they go broke, my voice is being heard and sort of the voices of... Because it mm-hmm. it takes more than one person. It takes more than a couple dozen YouTubers. It takes thousands and thousands and thousands of people all saying, we're not going to give you right. money. We're not going to give you money anymore, Disney. We're not going to give you money anymore, Warner Brothers. If you're going to keep producing this kind of crap... And that's what happens. That's what you're hearing. It's not being negative. It's just consumers telling you, I went to Taco Bell for a taco, not a hamburger. Exactly. That's it. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye.